Hello everybody, so today um, I'm going to show you how to go faster and all the things I know as best as I can. I'm going to try to explain everything I know about Kayak VR and how to get good at it, I guess. Um, some people in the Discord server, for the official Kayak Discord server, asked if I could show how to get better at it. Um, so I'm going to try my best. I'm not the best at explaining and we'll see how it goes from this. Um, also, sorry for the Quest 2 microphone. It seems to be compressing it and I'm not sure how to fix it. But I've tried to set up the recording as best as possible. If there's any hitches, I'm sorry about that. I tried to set it up as best as I could. But I'm going to start off by showing you my settings, which hopefully you can see them. So, in general, uh, we have the kayak feel as arcade. You you want arcade because you can build up speed faster, and I'm pretty sure you can get higher speeds easier. Simulation makes it like a lot more effort, so don't choose simulation. If you want to do for free roaming, then do simulation maybe. But I prefer playing arcade because it's just a lot easier um, for racing and for free roaming. Height in kayak, I put it as 65, but it's completely personal preference. I just like being a bit lower because. To get higher speeds, you want your sticks to go further into the water. So 65 seems to be that good amount where I can easily take it across the kayak without putting much effort in, but also be really low to the water to get the sticks in as fast as I can. Position offset, I've just kept that at zero. I haven't really played around with that. And I play without sticks. I just play two controllers in my hand. Um, Quest 2 controllers, Quest 2 headset. But they're not on a stick, so I just keep this setting off. Um... If you are playing with a stick, mess around with these settings until it comes to your liking. But I have heard that some people feel like playing with a stick is a bit of a disadvantage just because of the extra weight and how hard it is to get it around and move. Next up, we have accessibility. I have stab stabilized kayak at low, which means that only my Quest 2 headset can change the weight of the kayak and make it lean. So, for example... I lean and you can see that the kayak moves and and other ones the like the kayak or the paddles can affect weight as well but I don't like that I just like having the headset as you can see it tilts and tilting allows for easier turning you can do a lot faster turns so like as you can see just normal turns without tilting is a lot harder and then but if you tilt your head you can get a lot tighter turns which makes it a lot easier for racing on things like Costa Rica Jungle, where it has those few tight turns. Or even on Norway, when you're going around this little island, there's some nice little quick turns you have to go through. So that kind of turning is quite helpful. So I like to keep that on low. Off means controller and the, the head-mounted display affect the weight, which I don't like. Low is just the head-mounted display. Um... The medium is the controllers nor the head mounted display change the weight. And high is you have extra stability to make it so I guess you don't get motion sick. Turn head mounted display with kayak. I just have this one on. Um, smooth I haven't really tried out but I think it's new because I didn't notice that recently. Force multiply keep that at one. I'm pretty sure this just means you don't have to put as much effort into your paddles. Turning multiply this is personal preference and how you like to turn how quick you like to turn and how stable you can keep the kayak and i do change this amount quite often depending on what level i'm doing and how many turns are in it i've been trying to do olympic on australia so that has some tighter turns that you want to turn around quickly so i've put it on 1.5 usually it sits around 1.2 for normal play but 1.5 makes you get those turns quicker i feel but that might just be perceived. I'm not even sure if that's fully what this does. Um, how have you pronounced this? Vignet. Vignet. Uh, don't make fun of that. I have that on off. I'm pretty sure that just adds like a darker circle around your vision. Um, to make it so you don't get motion sick or anything like that. Crosshair I have off. I don't feel like you really need it. I don't see any benefits from it. UI. This is all personal preference. It doesn't really give any benefit maybe the race assist but this is just showing you where you're going to be going but sometimes you don't even follow those to get the faster routes audio once again personal preference graphics right so now this really depends on your system 
but I play, if I'm racing, it's usually around staying high, maybe going to the mediums. I have a Ryzen 9 5950X and a 3070Ti with 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz RAM. And I like playing at higher like resolutions. So high seems to be good to keep stable 90 FPS, keeping the latency low. Um, so I like that, but this is also personal preference. If you've got a bat, uh, worse system, maybe go for low to make it so it's more stable. If you've got a beast of a system, go cinematic so you can keep the quality and still race. Dynamic shadows, I keep this one on. I don't see much of a difference with high. Splashes, I keep this off so that when you hit the water, no splashes come up because these sometimes get in my vision and I don't like it, especially at nighttime races. So splashes is that kind of stuff. This kind of water particle effect. And I don't really like that. It just puts me off. And it doesn't make it so I can't concentrate as easily. Water ripples. That's just more of a visual thing. Doesn't make much of a difference. But I like keeping it on because it looks odd without it. Advanced graphics. This is purely up to your choice. I have pixel density at 1.3. Anti-aliasing it off at the moment. Sometimes it's on. Uh, fidelity FX I've got on, on an ultra. Just to keep it so I can see in the distance a bit more. DLSS I've got off because unlike other games where it lowers your resolution in this DLSS doesn't and it just ups your resolution so the game looks nicer so I just keep it off because it just affects performance uh, credits that's just credits and quick game that's just quick game um, so yeah the like things like height and kayak I like to keep low so you mess around with those settings until you like it Arcade, I feel like, is a must, um, especially for racing. But high and kayak, try to stay low, I feel. But once again, it's how you feel. But now let's get into actually how you kayak quickly. So you, what I do is, I, I'm not sure how to fully explain this, but you can see this more in the webcam footage. I kind of keep both sticks together like I'm actually holding a paddle, like, stick thing um and i go together and i try to keep it going straight down into my um make sure to also calibrate every now and then so i try to keep as close as i can into the kayak and i go as far down as i can going for really long um like strokes i think the word is so you just take really long strokes, keep it consistent, make it fast, but make sure your paddles are going in deep. And that's how you build up speed. But I like, I, I see a lot of people going like this in races, which really doesn't keep your speed. I mean, maybe eventually, but you need your sticks to go in deep to get the speed. And for turning, you need them to go deep to get better turns because otherwise it doesn't really do much. So, as you can see, and then one big stroke does more than, like, ten small strokes. You need long, deep strokes to go fast. Try to keep close to the boat, because I feel like you can do it a lot quicker if it's close. Instead of going far away, going for an angle, closer is better, just to make it so you can go back into the water fast on the other side. So you need long strokes to get that speed up. And then for turning, so hello sharkies, um, for turning, you want to use a mix of like, I, I don't know what this, what it's called. It's like kind of brake drifting, I guess you could call it. So you like stick your paddle in like that. The deeper you put it in, the harder you will turn, but you have to be aware that the back will spin out. So it might catch things behind you, so you just have to be aware of that. What I quite like to do is like get a quick one just to get the turn in, and then be able to turn quick. And then I use just normal turning to assist with it and keep up the speed, because in races you always want to be trying to get as much speed as possible. You don't want to ever stop. Um, doing this stops you from pedaling normally, so you want to use this enough to get those tight turns but not too much where you don't it doesn't impact your race because you can't paddle enough and then for more like 
smooth turns, you can just tilt your body in the position you want to go and then just kayak on the other side make sure to stay in low as well kind of do like a windmill pattern with your arm keeping it close to the kayak and then you should have your turning capabilities down all of this does require practice sometimes it feels a bit unnatural and you forget in the race sometimes you get a bit stressed out and you forget which way you have to be turning and I've done it plenty of times where I'm on a good run and then I realise I'm on a good run and I start turning like this way to go right and then I'm going the wrong direction and then that messes up. So it just requires lots of practice so you don't mess it up. The more practice, the better and the faster you'll be getting. Um, I like to play standing up as well because it means I can tilt my body a lot easier than if I was sat down. I only have that little amount of movement. If I'm stood up, I can move a lot easier, I can use my knees, I can use my entire body to get those faster turns and be able to have a lot more movement in my body. So I can change directions a lot faster and I can get a lot further over to make it so I turn a bit more. It does have a limit of when it stops bending over or like flipping. So keep that in mind, like you can't just walk miles away and expect to turn a lot faster. That's what this is. For starts, I like to, when I start a race, so um, I like to know the direction I want to go in, so I go the opposite way, so I can get that nice wide turn, which you which you want in this game as well. You want wide turns, but you want them to be wide going in tight, because it's not like a car where you have instant turning or anything. You kind of have to build into the turn, and you have to get used to that, because... You feel like you can make a turn really tightly, but you have to go a bit more wide into it. And that means you can come out tight and have those better um, corners. Save that little bit of extra time. Um, and don't expect when you race to get a high, a good time straight away because you really need to know the maps. There's a very low chance you'll just go straight into a map and not know and and like know where you're going because there's plenty of times where I've been confused where I'm going. Um, in a race and you just have to learn the map just like um, any um, race car driver would do they learn the tracks before they race so that they already have all the turns and directions so it doesn't come as a surprise to them if you play things like Beat Saber it's a lot easier to play the map once you know the direction if you have some sort of muscle memory and where to hit the notes it's very similar to that so you can't just go into a race expecting you'll be doing good first try um, and another little thing for turning, the further you stick the stick in, the harder you will turn. And if you put the stick barely in, you'll turn a little less, especially at high speeds. At high speeds, you have to remember, if you do this as well, you will start drifting really fast. You need to counteract that with some normal paddling, which is why I like doing this. But sometimes it does cause some disadvantages, but it is necessary in some scenarios. So I'll show you a quick race so we'll go lighthouse just to show you what i mean by my starts um hopefully it doesn't crash um oh no So as we can see, I, I get the quick calibration in before I start to make sure I'm in the right place. And then you you want to take the turns nice and wide to make it so you can be come out tight. And then, so, and yeah, I mean, you don't want to hit the poles, but sometimes... Um, you'll still get a world a record even if you have hit the poles so you don't have to worry about that so yeah I feel like that's about it for it a lot of it comes from just getting used to how to play the game um, a lot of practice um, and all of that it's like most games the more more time you put into it the more comfortable you feel, you need to be confident with this game to be good at it. You you have to be 
ready to take turns, ready to take those risks, so you can get those quicker times. Um, but yeah, I think that's about everything for everyone. Uh, if there's anything else you need help with, um, ask for it in the comments and I'll either make a new video on it, just a quick little video to show how to do something, or I'll explain it in the comments for you. Uh, another little extra thing is if you have quest controllers, if you have quest controllers, I like to hold them, I like normal, I've got the like, index strap things, like this, but instead of holding it like a normal quest controller like that, I like to keep it just around my knuckles like this, and hold it like down here, I just feel more comfortable, but that's also personal preference, I just feel like I do a lot better if I hold it like this, um, but yeah, that's everything. Uh, hope you enjoyed and I hope this helped. Sorry if it was badly explained, I try my best. Um, but yeah, I'll see everyone next time and I'll see everyone in the client Discord server when I try to get the last two records I need to finish them all. Unless someone's overtaken me, then I'll have to just take it back. But yeah, thank you all. Don't forget to like the video if it did help you. Comment what you might want to see next time or if you need any extra help with anything. And if if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe as it does mean a lot to me. Thank you very much.